you're looking for something new to watch from home, Rich Bonaducci has two ideas for us. Count them, one, two. Yep. <laughs> They're new in theaters today, at least one is, and both are available at home, right, Rich? Are, are we doing two just because that's as high as we can count? <laughs> <laughs> one, two. Check it out. Oh, look at that. That was magic. Thank you. Yes, if you'd rather not venture out to the theaters, the entertainment is coming to you. That's true in two very different ways, though. First up, Dave Batista and his group of mercenary buddies take the ultimate gamble to pull off the greatest heist ever attempted in Netflix's Army of the Dead. What the? They're not what you think they are. They're smarter. They're faster. They're organized. They're nasty. From filmmaker Zack Snyder, Army of the Dead takes place following a zombie outbreak that has left Las Vegas in ruins and walled off from the rest of the world. But being Vegas, there's a lot of money walled off in there too. So Army of the Dead has many of the trappings of other movies of its type, but everything is about this being over the top, the stakes, the weapons, what the zombies can do this time around, the humor, the explosions, the oddly timed the drama, the guts and gore, it's all up to 11. But it all has to go somewhere, and it wouldn't fit into a standard length movie. So cramming all that in with multiple subplots means that Army of the Dead is a bloated two and a half hour zombie flick. It's a bit wearing watching it all complete with a lot of plot holes and dangling threads by the time the credits roll, which you also need to watch for extra scenes. I enjoyed it for what it was, but it needed to be lean and mean. It certainly is mean, though. Speaking of mean, dueling Emmas chew up the screen in Disney's live-action origin of Cruella. And so, how to know you always tell me? Get her. This doesn't have to be a scene. It really, really does. Can I to remind you all that I'm doing this in heels? What was your name? Cruella. In heels. Both Emma Thompson and Emma Stone dig way into their roles and have a deliciously devious time doing it. They're a lot of fun to watch. The soundtrack is a lot of fun to listen to, and the costumes are a consistent high point. Now, whereas Angelina Jolie's Maleficent flick served only to undercut one of Disney's biggest baddies, Emma Stone's outing underlines the reason why Cruella is who she is, and she relishes being this baddie. Yes, there are plot points that threaten to make her too sympathetic a character, but no. Cruella is part I, Tanya, part All About Eve, part the DeVille Wears Prada, and all enjoyable, if a bit overlong, but that extra time allows for the great supporting cast to be the heart of the movie and Cruella's conscience. So again, why this movie? Well, why not? I don't know why we needed it, maybe just for money. I'm glad we've got it. B plus for me for two hours and 14 minutes of PG-13 rated Cruella. And by the way, as we mentioned, yes, it's in theaters this weekend, but it is also on Disney Plus streaming, and Dave Batista's movie is uh, available through Netflix. So two at home, and if you feel like venturing out this weekend, holiday weekend, well, one of them's in the theaters. Okay, it's a twofer. It's a twofer. It's a twofer long weekend. We'll have plenty of time to right. watch both of them. Right. Should we wish. Probably not the same audience. That would be maybe some. That would be five hours. That's a long time. That's a lot of watching. I think. Thank you, Rich.